Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be talking about 3D code. We're going to continue a little bit with our little whimsical creature contest, which by the way, the entries are going to be closing the next week. Remember the final date that you can submit your um, like a submission or your character is on February 28th. The submission link is already open down here. Um, we are having uh, some uh, interesting prizes as well that I'm going to be like uh, revealing in the next couple of days. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for it. Let's jump onto this little guy right here. So you might remember this little Bieber and Bieber that I was um, working on when I showed this guy for the map creation at the base creation a couple of uh, days ago. And um, this is a very basic texturing process that I did here inside of uh, Substance. And But the thing is, I even after using Substance for so long, I don't think it's the greatest tool for hand painted uh, textures. I do think, however, that 3D code is really, really, really good. So what I'm going to do here for you guys is I'm going to be importing this guy and I'm going to show you how to use the interface inside of a 3D code to build a very nice hand painted look to the character with uh, some interesting traditional techniques. Now, if this is the first time you're looking at 3D code and uh, you've never heard about this one before, let me tell you, it's a really powerful software. It can do sculpting, UVs, texturing, and a little bit of everything. And we actually have a course that was released not so long ago with all of the important tools that you need to know. And you can get this course with a huge, huge discount. Hey guys, I'm here with a great deal for all of you. For the next five days, we're going to be offering a 90% discount in all of our Udemy courses. 90% guys, this is the lowest we can go for our discounts and you are going to be learning from industry veterans and experts all of the workflows, techniques, tips and tricks that you want to become a great 3D artist. We have modeling, we have rigging, we have animation, we have sculpting, we have characters, environment, creatures, a little bit of everything. You can get a 90% discount for the next five days if you follow the link down here. All of the courses are recorded in real time, so you're not going to miss any part of the process. They include the project files. We have a support line for questions. You can ask questions on the site and we'll be getting back to you as soon as we can. And uh, yeah, we are also offering a free 30 day money back policy. So if you buy the course and you don't like it, I don't think it's going to happen. If you don't like it for any reason, you get your money back within 30 days of your purchase. No questions asked, you get your money back. So if you want to learn any 3D skill and you want to start this year strong with really good skills, really good fundamentals, make sure to check the link down here. Hurry up. Remember, this offer is only going to be available for five days. So join us and become an amazing 3D artist in no time. There we go. Whoa. There we go. I believe this is the last day, by the way, guys, for that uh, specific promo. So uh, if you don't want to miss out, make sure to use it before it goes away. So we're here inside of the uh, 3D code interface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to paint a UV map mesh. I'm going to load a file and we're going to go to our desktop to the little Bieber thing right here. Castor. I'm going to grab my uh, Castor, which is this one right here. And I'm going to say, uh, I think 2K is more than enough. So the normal map is coming from Substance Painter. So I'm going to set that to Substance Designer and Painter because we're going to be using the normal map. I'm going to hit OK. And this is what we get. So as you can see, this is the, the U-Deams, UBs. Wait a second. Is this right or wrong? Yeah, it looks OK. So this is our little cute little character right here. Now let's import the maps first, because even though we could do bakes instead of this software, I already have the bakes from Substance Painter, so we can just import them and use them. I'm going to go to textures. I'm going to say import, and we're going to import. Let's start with the normal map right here. We're going to grab the little uh, guy right here. This is the normal map, I believe. We're going to hit OK and hit OK. And if things are working nicely, no, that's not working nicely. That's working horribly. It means that we messed something up. So I'm going to unlock the layer, delete that one. Let's delete that one. And we're going to say texture, import, again, normal map. And then that means that it's probably this one right here. Okay. Okay. Huh, that's really weird. Give me one second. <laughs> there we go. My bad. I thought I had exported things from Substance, but I forgot to do it. Let's do it here real quick. Again, I'm just going to go to uh, 3D Code. Let's uh, like just delete those layers right there. Just delete and delete. There we go. And we can say uh, textures, import. And we're going to import our normal map here. And it's not in this. Oh, I made a mistake there. 
Castor, there we go. So it's this MB bird normal, there we go. Hit uh, Substance Signer, Substance Painter, hit OK. And as you're about to see, we have our normal map right here. Now, I do feel like the normal map's a little bit too strong, especially for the sort of like hand-painted effect that we're going for. So one thing we can do is we can actually go here and remove or decrease the depth opacity to something like a 50%. That way we still get the normal map, but it's not as intense. So it's not really like super extreme, right? We're gonna go textures. We're gonna import another one. We're gonna import this external ambient occlusion. And we have this Ambiver Mixed Ambient Occlusion, which is the one that we're going to be importing. Hit OK. The Ambient Occlusion, it's on the red channel. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. The Ambient Occlusion is super important because it's going to give us this extra layer of uh, depth and uh, like general uh, darkness, right? Now, we can, of course, change the roughness again. Or sorry, not the roughness, the opacity. And go to something like a 50% as well so that it's not as intense. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. Now, how does this work? How does uh, 3D code work? Well, it's it's pretty much a painter software. Again, it has a lot of different things. I've, 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 I'm only starting to use it as uh, as a new tool for my arsenal because I've been using Substance for so long, but it's really, really fun so far. So let me show you. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this layer base layer. That's bay. Let's call this a base layer. So on this base layer, I'm going to go to my colors over here and I'm going to go for a sort of like darkish tone and I want to go for a warm gray. OK, so something like this, not super colorful, but just a little bit of hue right there. I'm going to hit OK. Now, the shortcuts here are uh, right click to move this thing up and down, middle mouse to move the character from one side to the other. And then uh, if you press Alt, no, what was it? Just click to rotate the character. And of course, if you click with paint. I'm going to make this thing smaller. And if I start painting, you're going to see that, yes, we are adding the tone, but we're also adding some sort of like depth information. And that's something that we might not want right now. So the reason why the software is as powerful as Substance, for instance, is because not only can you paint on the color channel, you can also paint on the metallic channel and on the roughness channel and on the depth channel. So on this layer right here, I'm going to change the depth opacity to zero. I'm going to change the roughness opacity to zero as well, and even the metal opacity to zero. So what I want to do is this layer is just going to be pure color, pretty much. Like whatever I paint here, I just want to be painting pure color, as you can see right there. I'm going to, of course, go to the do, 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 symmetry option right here. I'm going to say symmetry, and I'm going to toggle the symmetry on. So symmetry, symmetry, there we go, and we're going to enable symmetry. So that way, if we paint on one side of the character, Let's do uh, X symmetry. There we go. We paint on one side. We're going to paint in on both. You can, of course, uh, not show the symmetry plane. So that way it's not as distracting. And we can make the brush really, really big and just give it a huge, huge, huge like pass here on the element. Let's go to all of the faces. This thing has some sort of like back face masking. So you need to actually like touch every single part of the character to, to make sure that you're painting it properly. As you can see, this gives us a really nice coverage overall. And now we can talk about some traditional concepts that we're going to be using to uh, start adding color to the element. Uh, if you've ever dabbled into digital painting, you might know that one of the like most typical things that people do when they're painting is they build up the values first. So the, the dark and the light tones, and then you can overlay or add color on top of those tones. And as long as your like tones are working properly on the black and white values, then color comes a little bit easier, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a new layer. This layer, I'm also gonna set the depth, the roughness, and the opacity to zero. By the way, you can also do this on the brush. Like up here, it says how much you're painting on each of the channels, depth, roughness, and stuff like that. You can remove that. And now I am gonna go and I'm gonna grab some light color. So I'm gonna grab this guy. I'm gonna push my values up, okay? And I'm also gonna like move them a little bit into the like warmer, so like yellowish tones, just to get a little bit of interesting variation, something like that. And what we can do is we can use this brush. I'm actually going to change the brush. I, I like using a, a harder brush for, for this uh, effect. And now I'm going to start painting the light on my character. I'm going to imagine that this guy is getting light from the upper planes, right? Like there's a, there's a light bulb on top of him and he's getting light from those particular areas. So all of the areas that I know and I see that are getting influenced by the light, I'm going to start adding light and, and just like brushing in this very nice clean value. 
Now, the cool thing about this is, as you can see, since we're working with opacity, as I start adding this like stroke, so if I go really soft right there, I get a slightly different tone. Can you see it right there on the, on the eye? If you press B on your keyboard, you're immediately gonna sample things. This is one of the things that people do a lot in Photoshop when they're digital painting or in like Procreate and stuff like that. They just sample the colors of the gradients that are being created so that we can work with this tone right there and not add any more light than what we might need. And look at that. Like just by doing that, we can start using that new tone that we added to soften up the transitions between all of the different elements. Also, if you make a mistake, you can grab the, the tone on the base to just like start blending in all of these different effects. And I find this super fun to do, guys. Like this is one of the things uh, that I, I really, really enjoy doing, which is like traditional painting, because it reminds me a lot about miniature painting. And you guys know that I, I do some miniature painting for my uh, D&D campaigns and stuff. So this is the kind of stuff that really, really... It's just very, very, very fun to paint, okay? So I'm gonna grab this again, this sort of light tone. It's not super light, still on the on like the mid-tones. And I'm just gonna start adding light on the areas of the character that I would expect there, well, to be a little bit more light. Like on this like upper part of the shoulder, like a little bit here on the arms. And I can be a little bit loose right now for this like initial build-up stage. Let's... Go to the back here, so all of this area right here would be like illuminated, right? And then once I have this, I can start grabbing this middle tones and I can start like fading in these colors. I personally really like when the hand painted stuff looks a little bit sloppy because it reminds me a little bit of like impressionism, you know, like Van Gogh and stuff. And uh, I I've always liked that sort of feel. But if you take a look at like World of Warcraft, League of Legends, and like hand painted stuff like that, it's usually really, really, really tight. Like the, the transitions and the softness of the whole thing tends to be quite, quite tight. But see how with a very single tone, we're already adding so much volume to the character. And it's just one tone. Right now or today, I'm just gonna be focusing on the um on the on the main body of the character, but we're gonna be doing the same thing with everything else later on, like the tail and stuff. Now, of course, things like the little hair that we have right here, uh, well, it's covered by shadow, but that doesn't mean that we can't light it up. There's a, a, a different concept. It's a little bit more advanced, but it's called local uh, color. So uh, if, you, if you take a look at me right now, my hair has its own local color. My skin has its own local color. My shirt has its own local color. And we are like the hair, my skin and the shirt are all being influenced by the lights that I have here in the studio. And we are, are all receiving the same amount of light. However, even though we're receiving the same amount of light, due to the local color that we have or the local uh, luminosity, we are not reflecting it the same way, right? So this could be like white hair. And therefore, even though it's on shadow, it's still gonna like, like glow a little bit more. Now I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna go to the colors. I'm gonna go a little bit higher, just a little bit. And I'm also gonna go with the brush a little bit smaller. As we start adding more of these things right here, we're going to be simplifying this and we're going to be adding a little bit more light to the whole scene, not forgetting to blend like this. But that light is going to help me like bring all of these volumes up even more. And the hand painted technique works really well because you don't actually need all of the maps that we normally need, like the, the reflection and the metallic map, if you paint everything this way. OK, now, for instance, here on the eye, I'm actually going to grab a darker tone. I'm going to paint very carefully, the inside of the, of the eye right there. I might even wanna, might want to grab this and make it a little bit darker, hit okay. And especially this like inside part right there, I can paint it so that it's even darker. You, you do need to know a little bit about like traditional shading. If you guys never taken like a, like a traditional uh, drawing or painting class, I strongly recommend you do, even as a hobby, it's a, it's a really good idea. <coughs> my god sorry because uh it, it teaches you about very very important stuff for instance this guy right there that's a that's a reflection pretty much so i'm gonna go really really high on the values and i'm gonna paint that reflection right there okay and that's gonna make it like pop quite a bit like that and if i want to make it even like brighter i can go a little bit higher, never go to the full like white because once you go to that full like value, it's very, very difficult to um, to come back from it, okay? You, you're not gonna be able to 
to get any more uh, like value from there. But look at that. That's a nice little like white effect. Now we can't use this white right here because now it looks like we're painting uh, like some sort of like war paint or something. So that's why building up our tones is super, super important when the, when working this way, because by, by doing this softly and uh, and creating the tones in a, in a nice way, we're going to be able to create this very nice, again, stylized hand painted effect on the whole thing. Now, if we want to paint a little bit of shadows, this is very important. I do want to do some shadows on this guy. And uh, I know we're using this very basic color right now. This is just grayscale. What I can do is I can go darker, but I'm going to go to the opposite side of the color wheels. So this is blue shadows. Why? Because what's going to happen is by having these blue shadows, I'm going to be able to create a little bit more contrast, probably a little bit less saturated. I'm going to be able to create a little bit more contrast on the colors themselves. So let's sample that color right there and very softly start creating this shading here on the sphere. And we're going to start blending, of course. Like if I see that I need to, to clean some of this stuff, we can start blending. Now, of course, the eye will be projecting a little bit of a shadow on top of this, like, uh, this element right here. And then we can bring back a little bit of the, of the skin color and look at that. We're creating a really, really nice depth. That's all painted. This is all painting. Normally, we would norm we would do this with lights and shadows on a rendering engine, but by doing this method right here, it allows us to create something that looks a little bit more interesting. Let me show you real quick here, for instance, for the um, for the nose. I'm gonna grab a, a like lighter tone right here. Let's add a little bit of, uh, of life here to the to the nose. Again, V to sample the colors. Just keep building the, the values. And you can see the, the layers of transition that we get there. The more we blend, we can even switch to a soft brush. For instance, if I switch to this soft brush right here and I grab this, the blending is going to be even easier because the soft brush will allow me to, to create a, a, an even nicer and a cleaner transition. Look at that. Like if we take this, like this is just a base layer. This was just a very basic color, very similar to what we had right here in the in, in substance. Now I know we painted this layer right here, but it was nothing. This is like this very simple light layer is nothing compared to what we can do by doing this very cool looking um, like uh, effect right here. Now, I'm not gonna have time to, to do the whole process. I would love to just stay here and, and continue working on this character for like hours and hours. We'll probably do a little bit more this week. I can't promise exactly when, but I do wanna do a couple of extra tricks. Uh, but this is like a very basic construction that you can do. And I do wanna show you one more thing. I'm gonna create a new layer here, a new uh, color layer. Again, we can turn this off or the brush. Either of them is perfectly fine. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go for the local colors, which were the colors that I was mentioning. So I'm going to go for this sort of like brown color. OK. And this brown color is going to be covering pretty much the face of my character like this. OK. I'm going to cover the nose real quick just because it's a little bit faster. So imagine this thing is covering the whole thing. Uh, I do believe we have an eraser, by the way. So in case you need to erase, we can erase specific parts of the of the element right there. Let's grab this color again. Oh, let's go to brush. There we go. The eyes, for instance, the local color. Well, uh, give me one second. Let me just finish this. So once you find the local color, of course, this local color is deleting all of that beautiful values that we were able to build. But if we change the blending mode of this uh, color to something like an overlay, for instance, look at that. Or we can change this to a soft light. Right, we can do a multiply even. Like there's a couple of, a lot of different things that we can do here to blend the very nice uh, values that we created. I usually like the soft light or the hard light. We can blend those values that we created and create, look at that. This is very, very rich colors. We're creating very, very deep transitions on the little uh, thing right there. And it's getting a, well, it's giving us a really, really cool result as you can see right there. We can do the same thing for the eyes. So I'm gonna, um, let me create a new layer and I'm just going to go to the brush. I'm going to grab a white color. We can paint the eyes. Okay. And right now it looks very flat, very ugly, but if we set the eyes for to something like a, like a linear dodge, for instance, uh, linear dodge is a little bit too much. Let's do like a multiply. 
Let's try linear burn. I wish it worked a little bit like Photoshop where you could like move things around. Overlay, overlay looks quite nice. Look at that. We get the very nice brightness on the on the eyes. And of course, we can lower the opacity to something like a 50%. So that way, this layer is making the eyes pop quite 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 a bit without actually removing all of the very nice information that we built underneath it. One more layer here. Let's do a darker color for the nose. So we're going to go for this I'm going to go darkish reddish, something like this. And we paint the nose. Like that. And again, we switch the blending mode to something like an overlay. Or in this case, we can try again like a hard light. There we go. And we start building something that looks really interesting. The next step would be to add another layer yet another layer and start sampling the colors that we're getting from this guys. For instance, that very shiny effect. I'm going to go a little bit more towards the yellows. I'm going to brighten this up a little bit right there. And now I can start painting with color. I'm no longer worrying about lights. I'm actually going directly to the color and we're going to be using color to brighten out a couple of the areas that we want right here. Okay. So that's it guys. That's the, that's the like super fast uh, introduction to, to 3D code that we have right here. Seems like, oh, I might have mistakenly disabled my symmetry. There we go. So with this, guys, hopefully, if you guys are still like on the fence about how or what to do with your um, with your characters and you don't know how to get this very interesting um, like hand painted effect, well, this is a great technique. Remember that we also have, again, the 3D Code uh, course ready for you in the code down here. So you can get it for like 90% off, depending on where you are in the world, and uh, learn all of the other amazing tools that 3D Code has to offer. I'm going to be back tomorrow. I want to go in and take a look at the uh, Japanese tunnel. We finished the mask yesterday, and I think we can add the smoke and that just a couple of extra little things. So make sure to leave a like, guys. Share, subscribe. Uh, it helps the channel a lot. And um, I'm going to go, I'm going to finish this, and I'm going to go back to working on the final parts of the mechanical creature that we're doing for the next premium course so stay tuned make sure to hit the little bell icon and i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye